joy in the house this morning. It's so wonderful to see you all. Welcome to Mossfield Community Church. It's great to have you with us and if it's your first time here we want to say an extra special warm hello and welcome to you and good morning to our balcony. It's lovely to see you all. Give us a wave and welcome also to our lovely online family. We want to say hello to you also. Let's just quiet our hearts for a moment shall we and open in prayer. Let's just pray. Lord we thank you that you are awesome. And we are thank you for your joy this morning in this Christmas season, Lord. We thank you for everything that you are and everything that you do. So this morning, Lord, we want to honor you with our praise and our worship. We want to lift the roof, Lord, in praise to you, Lord. We thank you for what you are. And we thank you for everything you do, for your love, your protection, your guidance, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord, for this service this morning. We give you this service. Holy Spirit, be amongst the praise. Be in the word. And everything that we do, we give to you this morning. Amen and amen. Amen. Let's just run through a few short announcements. Uh, The prayer and praise meeting is Monday evening at 7 p.m., as usual, here in the sanctuary. Wednesday morning, we have another prayer meeting at church. We have the Abide prayer and devotional meeting, and that is at 9.30 a.m., Thursday morning is the All Nations Welcome Cafe in the Mossville Hall, and that's from 10 a.m. until 12 noon. Now, the men's meeting Christmas meals this week. You excited, guys? Now, your Christmas meal is this Wednesday at 7 p.m. That's 7 p.m., guys. Now, we have got lots and lots of men's names down, but we do need you to confirm that you want to come along for your meal. We've got more men this year than we've ever had coming along for food. So we do need to know if you are coming along. Could you please confirm with Gordon Orr today? And we can just check all that out for catering purposes. So please don't forget to do that today at the latest, guys. We would really appreciate that. Bubblegum and Fluff is this Friday in the church with our two local primary schools um, coming into the sanctuary. Volunteers, please, could you confirm with Corrine at the back there if you plan to participate? Please do let her know if you're still coming along to help her with Bubblegum and Fluff. The Mossy Crew are having their Christmas quiz and fun night this Friday night at 6.45. 
p.m. Get that date in your diaries, all the young crew. And the Kids Connection Party is this Saturday. Now, that is at, that's Saturday, the 10th of December, and it's at 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., and it's in the Mossvale Hall. Don't forget that. This Saturday, 6 to 8 in the Mossy Hall. Just a wee reminder, guys, for all of you, just re keep remembering to check our website and the weekly notice board email for all the dates of all the amazing Christmas events that's happening in this wonderful church. I'm going to invite the lovely Connor to come up for a wee second. Welcome, Connor. Good morning, Mosville. First of all, on the, uh, the men's meal, it's, it's not pie and beans this year. We're getting an actual meal. Stevie's been telling people it's pie and beans, but uh, it was pie and beans last year, but this year we're, we're getting starter main dessert. So, uh, whew, so don't miss out on that. Also, I'd just like to thank everyone that came along over the last two nights to the Christmas show. Um, we had a lot of fun. It was a fantastic two nights, and I'm so happy to announce that we've totally smashed the record again this year, uh, and the total is sitting at £5,300. Um, <laughs> But there is donations, there is donations still coming in, so we're expecting to go a bit above that, but it's all because of you guys out there and your continuous generosity, and we thank you again on behalf of the events team here at Mosville. Amen. Thank you.
to Calvary, where Jesus died and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on the cursed tree. Drenched in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's stone. The entrance sealed by heavy stone. Messiah still and all.
Hallelujah. Go ahead and take a seat. Welcome, everyone. Thank you, guys. That was tremendous. Taking a wee breath. No, I, I was actually, I was lost there for a minute or two. I was just there. wasn't expecting that one there. Amen. Amen. Just say amen. amen. It's okay to be a little bit loud in the church from time to time. After all, it is the season of joy. That was a delayed reaction there, but we're, nonetheless, you know, it, it, every Christmas it gets harder and harder to kind of find something to say. Is that right, Pastor Debbie? Uh, no, it does. You're no, you're no saying it. It, it, it does, and it'd be easy for me to stand up here today, really easy, and speak about my all-time favorite buzzword. No Christmas. He, and he's known me since I was that size. It's joy. Because the truth is, joy is the absolute bedrock of my life. Um, godly, holy joy. And Christmas, after all, is it not really about bringing joy in the form of the little baby or the infant Jesus? But today, I want to talk about Grace. And not Tim's wife, Grace, but I want to talk about, about God's wonderful, incredible, joy-filled, amazing grace. Now, I know you figured out by now that at Moss Vale, we, we love this season. But we also know you're not confused that we don't just love Jesus more at Christmas time. We, we love him all year round. That's kind of how it works. But Later on this month, well, I've actually watched one already, but later on this month, I'll, I'll watch a couple of Christmas movies. And every year, new Christmas movies come out. And every year, one of these movies seems to become a classic in time to come. Now, you might well know that my wife, Gail, apart from being beautiful, she has a love for the movie Elf. But I have a love for the movie, It's a Wonderful Life. And you can figure out who the mature one is in our household. <laughs> but God makes us all unique, thank God that he does. And I suppose there may be someone in here's film is a favorite version or a version of the Grinch who stole Christmas. But today, I'm going to share with you about the grace that saves Christmas. That's what we're going to talk about. See, neither the Grinch nor Ebenezer Scrooge can actually steal or ruin our Christmas. It's an impossibility for Christmas to us is secured for us through the grace that God revealed when he sent his only begotten son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. How many are glad God sent Jesus? Oh, hallelujah, I am too. Now, Scripture says, here's our Scripture for today, although that opening song, My Testimony, was kind of my sermon, almost rolled into one today, so well done, guys, for that. But John chapter 1 says, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. Amen. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who the Father from heaven, full of grace and truth, John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I says, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Wow. Out of his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace already given. Verse 17. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. See, mankind or humanity has many, many needs today. 
and they're not being fulfilled in our world or in our government or in our country, I would still say today, and I could be wrong here, but man's greatest need or the greatest need mankind has or humanity has is grace. Absolute amazing grace. Now, let me, let me get back a wee bit here. The song, the particular song that says, Santa Claus is coming to town. Who's heard that one? That was written about 90 odd years ago. And my personal favorite, and I'm sure it's sure, is the version that the boss sings, Bruce Springsteen. No one beats the boss when he belts out, so you better be good for goodness sake. You've not heard that song, have you? Okay then. You're all so spiritual and godly that you've never listened to that song. The point of that song is that children will not get anything from Santa if they're bad. That's the point of that song. But we all discover early in life that that song's not entirely accurate, is it? It's not. Because most of you in here have been bad boys. And bad girls, Susan. Don't laugh too loud, Pet. We know about you. Shell soup, Bob. See, I don't know about in your household, but even when I was not a good boy in my household, I still get Christmas gifts. I still got them from dad and mom. Why? Because they loved me with a love that was unconditional. Did you hear that? Unconditional love. I was loved by my parents even when I was unlovely. I know you find that hard to believe, that I was unlovely. Spend an hour with my mother, she will tell you things. And this in a very small way is what the Lord Jesus Christ did in a grand way. A really grand way. He came down to Bethlehem's manger to be our Savior, to be our Redeemer, to be our Lord. He didn't come, listen to this, He didn't come because you deserved it. Are you hearing this? He didn't didn't do that. He came because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. That's why he came. We were desperate. We were desperately in need to be rescued. So God did something miraculous about it and gave us Jesus. So this morning, let's just think about grace. Let's think about the amazing, abundant, lovely, wonderful, glorious, magnificent grace of God. Because it is all those things to us today. Let's think about the undeserved love that has been given to you and I. After all, let's be, let's be clear about this. Christmas would be empty without grace. It would be totally, totally empty without the beautiful grace of God. And at Christmas time, Christmas time we often get a little bit tired. And we get a little bit weary and a little bit fatigued. And sometimes, sometimes we find Christmas incredibly emotional, don't we? Why is that? Because we reminisce at Christmas. We look back and some will look back this Christmas and there'll be some loss and tragedy. And there'll be some grief, and it'll be hard for some people this Christmas. And Christmas can be an incredibly lonely time of year for many people. But I would say this, such feelings and experiences can actually keep us from knowing the joy of Christmas in its totality and in its fullness. And then there are those who get caught up in the secular experience of Christmas as a time for parties or a time for excess. And then, when the Christmas season is all done and dusted, and it's over, you will find some people who are devastated, who are broken in body. Some are broken in spirit, but most are broken financially. So here's the thing. Leaving Jesus Christ out of Christmas is the most dangerous thing that we can ever do. The most dangerous thing. 
Jesus was crowded out of the inn 2,000 years ago, and he is crowded out of our modern day Christmas celebrations and activities at this time of year also. How foolish. How foolish. But here's the deal. If you and I, and I know we're going to do this, if we concentrate on the unmerited love of God and the love of God that he has for us, then you and I can experience the grace that saves Christmas and we can return to the true meaning of Christmas and never lose the meaning for the season. Now listen to this. The baby in the manger was not a result of my goodness. The baby in the manger was not a result of man's goodness. The baby didn't come because of somebody's prayers. Listen to this. The baby came because of grace. That's why the baby came. The unmerited love of God. It was in the fullness of time that Jesus came forth to be born of the Virgin Mary. Yes, the Virgin Mary. What an amazing grace existed in the heart of God to send his son into this dark, sin-cursed world for our redemption. And it all began because of the grace of God. See, Christmas did not begin in the mind of a heart of man. It was completely initiated in the mind and the heart of Almighty God. We read this last week. We'll probably read it next week and in Christmas Day from Isaiah chapter 9. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, of the greatness of His government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over the kingdom forever, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time and forever. And I love this line, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish it. Amen. Because we must know it, that the zeal of the Lord, yes, the zeal of the Lord performed this great miracle. Understand this church today, at Christmas time, God's burning love, His burning, His radical love, it broke forth in demonstrated grace on the night Jesus was born and laid in that manger. This was anything but a silent night in heaven. There was a roar, there was a shout in the heavenlies. No wonder God sent angels to sing of the announcement of the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll tell Tell you why God's zeal on this night was a flame. It was a flame, and his will was being fulfilled, and his will was being accomplished. I'll tell you something. Glory erupted on the night Jesus was wrapped in strips of swaddling clothes and laid in a hay-filled manger. Glory erupted in the heavens. Hallelujah choruses rang out in the glory of God as Jesus came to be a little baby. Now I wonder, does that joy and that awe and that glory and that passion for, for God still rise up within us when we hear the name of Jesus echoed, whether it's in the heavenlies, whether it's from the pulpit, or whether we just hear somebody say, I love the Lord Jesus Christ. Does his name still excite you? I hope it does. Now I know the December school break, and I can't wait for it either. And I have no kids at school. It's a much needed holiday. Glory to God it is. It gives us time of rest with the family and the dog. I'm actually dreading it. I'd rather be here at church. Gives us time to rest with the family. That's if you love your family. If you don't, you'll go out for a coffee somewhere. But you know what it does for me and probably for our leaders? That little time in there just allows me to reset mentally. That's what it does. It prepares me for January. <laughs> Glory. But remember, I want you to remember this. For me, and I'm sure for you, it's not a holiday. It's a holy day. This is holy. 
This is about the holiness of God. As much as we love the holiday, let us not forget the holiness that surrounds everything that we are doing and what we're celebrating. This is the time we celebrate the birth of our Savior Jesus, heaven's gift of love to you and I. Beautiful. Have you figured out that you are the recipient of this amazing grace? That's for you. That's a, that's, that's a freebie for you today. Because hear this today, I'll say it again. I personally, and I am possibly not the worst of sinners, I personally do not deserve the gift, the Christmas gift that was laid in that manger. We don't really deserve Christmas, but we have it anyway. We get it anyway. Why? Because it's the gift of God's grace. Scripture tells us the wise men brought him gold. It says it in there, but it was nothing, absolutely nothing compared to the riches given to those who've come to believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the word of God almost tells us he became poor so that I could become rich. My bank account isn't that good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's pretty empty as things stand today. But am I rich? Oh, I am the richest man in the world. Why? Because the Lord Jesus Christ lives with me, lives in my heart. Amazing, that's you as well. Scripture says he left. Wow, can you believe this? We hear it all the time. He left the streets of gold for the path to a cattle stall. He did that. He left Amazing, he left the company of the heavenly father and sparkling angels for the company of sinful man. Let Stephen and I. You get it in the neck every time, son, don't you? He left the banqueting table. I would struggle to leave the banqueting table. He left the banqueting table of glory for a feeding trough. He left the robes of deity for swaddling clothes. Wow. Yet, if we simply believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, he takes our rags of sin, hallelujah, now you get it, and gives us a robe of righteousness. It's not our righteousness, it's his righteousness that covers our life and covers our shame and covers our sin. So when it comes, now listen to this, this is important. When it comes to buying someone the perfect gift, who struggles with that? I don't struggle with that at all. I know exactly what she likes. And it's me. No problem there. I just walk in with a turkey dinner and she is absolutely overwhelmed. No problem. But when it comes to buying the perfect gift, hear this. Only those who love us know what we need the most and what we need the most. And God, hallelujah, hallelujah, God knew what I needed most was a redeemer, was a savior. How did he know that? He knew that because he loved me. He loved me, and here's the thing, here's the bottom line. See, someone who really adores you and someone who really loves you, they know what you need, but furthermore, they're willing to provide it for you. That's how it works. And without the grace of Christ, Christmas would never be happening. It would never be taking place. I, I see it this way. Now, this is through my eyes. And my eyes are always positive all the time. Forgive me for that. Christmas, for me, is an absolute time of beauty. It's an awesome time of brightness. And that first Christmas really set the stage for the beauty of every single Christmas that follows thereafter, every single one. Because for me, this time of the year, more than any other time of the year, it's a time about me personally being blessed. Because you get to give, and then you get to receive, and that comes from heaven, but it also comes from earth. We in this church, are we not blessed with good friends? Are we not blessed with good food? Oh, we love the food. 
We're blessed with good cheer. We're blessed with good gifts. But yet these are symbols of what Christmas actually is all about. Christmas is truly about being blessed with one blessing after another because of the abundant, amazing grace of God. The unmerited love of God holds out blessing after blessing to you and I. After all, look at it this way. Having given us his only begotten son, is there any good gift that he would actually withhold from us? I don't think so. And here's where we have to get a little bit more real. Because the important thing to remember regarding this is I've got to receive what he's offering me. And you have to receive what he's offering you. So we now really have a choice. And as we read back there in the book, the book of John, we can choose the law or we can choose grace. Scripture says the law came through Moses. Understand the law never saved anyone. The Pharisees thought it saved them. They thought they were great and cleansed and clean and pure and going to heaven. But the law never saved anyone. Understand the law is not bad, but the law cannot bless you with life and grace. It doesn't work that way. Only a living Savior can offer you the gifts of life and the gifts of grace. The law tells us what we are to do. The law tells us we, what we are not to do. Every one of us, hey, every one of us, every one of us, that's us in the room, has failed to keep the law. It's a fact. And what awaits those who break the law? is the judgment of God. And if all we have is our attempts to justify ourselves before God by our good works, we are doomed. We're absolutely doomed. So understand this, God created you with purpose. You have a purpose in this world, and that is to be in a relationship or to be in fellowship with Him and then to enjoy all the fullness of life that He offers you. Mentioned earlier, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, that's you, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes on Him will not perish but have everlasting life. But we have a problem, don't we? We have a problem that we cannot fix on our own. And some of us, we're still trying to solve this by ourselves. We think we have the answer. But Romans chapter 3 verse 23 clearly states, For all have sinned and all have fallen short of God's glory. What is the result of our sin? That is called separation from God. And it creates for you and I this chasm, this valley between you, us, and God. But then Paul says again in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, for the wages of sin is, but the gift of God is eternal life with Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. See, wages are what we earn with our actions or by our actions. But what do we earn by our sin? It says in there, death. Now we understand there are two types of death, don't we? There was the physical death and then there is the spiritual death. Our sin separates us from God for eternity unless somehow, somehow we are released from paying the price for it. So Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 states, people are destined to die once and after that face the judgment. So church, we face judgment for the sin we commit. So let me ask you the question. We've been asking this question all year round. Can our or can my best efforts bridge the separation between us and between God? The answer is no. No, it can't. Good works will never be enough. Good works are not bad. They are just never going to be enough. But listen, what, but can we be saved by grace? Can we 
be saved by grace, which is God's unmerited love. Oh, thanks be to God that we can, because he looks upon us this morning, and he sees the hopeless situation we're in. And what does God do for you and I? He provides a way of escape, or he provides a way up. Are you glad about that? Praise God that we are. And here's the cool part of the matter. Ephesians, I love it, chapter 2. For it is by grace you have been through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Church today, we can't build a bridge to God. But Jesus is God's bridge to us. Praise God. It says in Romans 5, verse 8, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. How did God show his love even though we were sinners? How did that work out? While we were still sinners, Jesus died for us. Jesus died for us to pay the penalty for our sins. Church, listen today. It's Christmas time. I'm being easy on you. Jesus Christ, we've sung this, conquered both our sin and death by dying and by rising again. That is the Christian gospel. Jesus is the bridge from death to life. And each and every one of us at different times of our life, we must respond to what God is saying. We must respond to what God is offering us. And John chapter 1 verse 12 says, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Amen. So how do I become a child of God? Simply by receiving and believing in Jesus, trusting in his sacrifice as the payment for our own, yes, our own personal sin. Revelation says in chapter 3, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Would you stand with me today? God offers us grace, but listen to this now. We have to choose it. He offers it, but we have to choose it. Jesus came into this world to redeem sinners like you and I. Scripture says he lived this perfect life. He died the most cruel of all death and rose bodily from the grave to make this grace and forgiveness available. And here's the thing. Have you and I received today the grace of God? Bow your heads with me this morning as we come to the close. I would go as far to say, life is really only available when we accept the grace of God. Understand, Christmas cannot at any point be stolen from you and I if we keep our attention in the real meaning and the real purpose of Christmas. And I would say God's grace saves Christmas and returns it to what it's actually meant to be. This is what he came to do. He came to die so that we might live. He rewrote it from death to life. That's exactly what Jesus came to do. And I wonder, can we pause right here at the beginning of this Christmas season? And can we stop in our tracks? And can we fully say, I have received the grace of God so much that I am now one who can freely give grace. He provides the grace. That's the grace that saved us. That's the grace that is available to humanity today. And we're going to stop right now. We're going to pause already at the start of a busy month, and we're going to break bread together today. But before we do so, I'm just simply asking you to pause, to stop, whatever you're thinking, whatever you're doing, and try and embrace what has just been spoken over the church this morning about God's wonderful 
incredible, amazing grace. We've heard that Jesus died. We've heard that Jesus rose again. We know that we are saved not by works, but by grace. We know that works are good. But it's by grace we stand this morning. So take a moment. Don't think about anyone else. Think about you. Think about you. Think about you and your life, your lifestyle, your thought patterns, what's flowing through you as a child of God. So that when you come to partake of these emblems today, this piece of bread and this this cup of juice this morning, knowing it represents the broken body of Jesus Christ, knowing it represents the shed blood of the Lamb, that you know you're coming here with a sense of a clean heart, clean hands, to break bread together. And we rejoice in that. Because Paul says, let a man now examine himself, and then so let him eat. And all we're doing is we're reflecting on our own selves right now. See, I am grateful for the grace of God, but I'll tell you how it works. It only works if I can give what I've received. That's how it works. If I'm happy to get grace from everyone else and from God and from other people, but unwilling to be forgiving and unwilling to be gracious, that creates a block for us. A sense of division, a divide in the bridge, a brokenness. And when God saved you, he made you complete. He made you whole. He made you brand new from the inside out. And grace is the most important thing. I would say, I know it's love as well, but grace is the most important thing that humanity needs today. Because we are living in some of the most unforgiving, ungracious times that the world has ever known. And if the church can rise up and be a church that is gracious and godly and holy and good, then we truly can make a difference with what, what, who we're called to be. So Willie and Dad and Pastor Debbie and Danny are going to join me here at this time. Just come, if you stand just here and face out, I'll, I'll give you the, the stuff to do. If you look around you, we're going to do this in a kind of orderly fashion today. And, and Gordon has got Daniel and Stephen that's working with him today. So keep an eye on them. We're going to bring you one row at a time. It works better this way. It saves any kind of confusion. So Father... We come before you in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your grace. We, we thank you that your amazing grace saved a wretch like me. And if it hadn't been for that amazing grace, we would not be standing here this morning. But you lavished this upon us. So great was your love for us. Even when we were ugly and didn't deserve it, you lavished it. It oozed out of your being and poured over our lives. So we are forever grateful for the cross. We are forever grateful for your love. We're forever grateful for the grace of God. And as you've stopped in your busy week and before you go again, tomorrow morning, Make this moment, make this moment count. Make it count. Just feel his atmosphere, feel his presence wash over you today. Open your hands, open your hearts to God. Find yourself in a posture of receiving something today. What do you do when you receive something? You put your hand out. Put your hand out. 
to, yeah, Lord, I have maybe not been the most loving. I've maybe not been the most unforgiving. I've maybe not been the most gracious. But, Lord, I so want to be. I so want to be that person. Receive this gift. Let it come down upon you today. So, Father, we thank you that you allowed your body to be wounded and beaten and broken. We thank you that you are the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. We thank you that you allowed every drop of blood to be spilt from your body. We thank you. Lord, I thank you that you made a way, a way of, a way of escape, a way out of the condition of sin that hung over our lives. And now we are free to be called children of God, liberated, liberated and loosed to walk with our heads held high because we're children of God. So as we come to partake these emblems, bless them to our bodies. And maybe pause and stop and just take a moment, a little personal moment with you today, Jesus. We pray this in Jesus' name. I'm going to ask Pastor Robert and Tim, if they would come also and take a tree up to the balcony for us today, that would be awesome.
stone was moved for good for the land we conquered today. And the dark road on their tombs. Yeah, that was awesome. Let's just stay in that wonderful place of worship. Our next act of worship is to uplift our tithes and offerings. Our large box is for your general tithes and our other box is for the missions. Please do come when you are all ready. Thank you. Joy to the world. to the world. 
Uh, what a service this morning. Thank you so much, Pastor Hugh, for the wonderful word of God this morning. Let's hear a round of applause for that and to our incredible praise band. It just remains for me to let you know that our cross is here. If you want to come for prayer this morning, our prayer ministry team will come alongside you and pray with you. Just another um, little announcement. In the back hall, we have some beautiful fresh holly wreaths that you may want to come and purchase that were on the tables last night at the Christmas show and the tuck shop is also open from all the sweeties left over from last night so lovely Christmas wreaths are available for your Christmas table this year uh, please do come next door and purchase one and all the money will be going towards Organa missions so it just remains for me to close the service with a verse from Ephesians now to him is able to do immeasurably more than we all ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace, church. Bless you all.